started off as just a just a project, like it was just a, an after school project with me and our whole book list, uh, and we just pretty much uh, came up with the idea. You know, I pitched the idea. Hey, you know, what if what if we combine like elements of like traditional metal and hardcore with uh, new elements of like trance and like electronica and stuff? Just kind of we just kind of started playing with it. It really wasn't that big of a deal, you know. We just it was just one of those things that it was kind of like a hobby, you know, just like after school, like just just working on songs and stuff. And we ended up coming up with an actual album. Like we were like, hey, you know, let's start working on the album. We worked on an album for like a good three months, and uh, we came out with uh, everything perfect on the wrong day. We just put it up. We just like we we found like an easy method to put it up on iTunes, and then just threw it up on MySpace. And like we weren't really expecting much from it, and it just it really took off. It was it was just insane. Like what happened? And at that point, like. Uh, our old vocalist or whatever didn't didn't think like did he didn't want to do that as a career, um, but I did. So he ended up going and doing softer stuff, which he wanted to pursue. And then I ended up pursuing the band. We uh, ended up making a full piece because I really wanted to make it like a full sound. And we got uh, a bunch of guys from our local scene, and also like did tons of tryouts, like looking for a new singer. I wasn't in the band at the time, but then uh, this band in theory from Texas. Apparently broke up the same time that Brack left, so I think Lee just shot them a text message saying something like "Scott eats in theory" or something, and uh, um, then I guess they were all down. So then it went from a guitarist to a guitarist, bassist, and drummer of that band. So it's a full band, minus vocals, and um, they had a bunch of tryouts in Texas and uh, all over the country, really. Um, I kind of just was browsing on MySpace and I saw the uh, an ad that said, "Do you see yourself as the next singer of this band or whatever?" I had some, I had a lot of free time in New York City, and uh, there's a bunch of little tiny studios and stuff all over there for like 10 bucks an hour, 20 bucks an hour type thing. So uh, I was like, man, might as well, but, you know, not doing anything else. And uh, um, they sent me uh, the song Giants in the Ocean with no vocals on it, and wanted me to do that. So I did that, but that's pretty much just me mimicking Brack. And then they sent me, uh, did that, they liked it, and they sent me another song, which is going to be on our new album. It's on MySpace, Long Walks on Short Bridges is the name now, but uh, and I just did some dummy vocals over that, and then um, and they all randomly, like, conference called me one day, which was like, hey, I want you to be the singer, blah, blah, and then uh, next thing you know, it was, uh, they bought me a plane ticket, and now I live in this guy's spare bedroom, and uh, that's how I came into play with the band. I wasn't in the band at the time, but there's, from what Lee and, and uh, it, it's said, just it's just random. There's no there's no background to it. Not that we uh we, we I think we started we were gonna we were gonna start just saying every time someone asked about Sky Airplane we were gonna make a new a new thing about it. Like oh well you know uh, what was one that uh, I think it was Wolf from uh, the Chariot told me to say the the movie Langoliers by Stephen King where like they go they're flying and they, they it's kind of like this guy eating an airplane they go in some time warp type thing. That was going to be one of them. One of them was, uh, we went to an elementary school or something and asked a bunch of elementary school kids to name our band, and they came up with it. There's no real real background to it. I think they just kind of said it and it stuck, you know, stuck out. And I mean, people hear Skites airplanes, like, whoa, what's that? You know, like, instead of saying, you know, murdered hollows, dead bodies, you know, like something stupid like that. I mean, come on. Death and blood is in every band's name nowadays, anyway. It's more of like an in imagery type thing. We, we just really wanted something unique, we really didn't want anything that, that was just generic at the time, so that just kind of stuck, so it sounded silly at the time, but it just it really stuck with the band. Like, ever since we were, like, even a two-piece, like, people have been talking to us, like, they've, been, they've been flying down, like, ever since we were in school, so, and, uh, we, uh, we've just, we just still kept in contact with them, we were like, oh, you know, we lost a singer, and they're like, oh, well, you know, like, you know, contact us, like, when, guys find it like get everything resolved and stuff and then, you know, we got a new singer we would send the demos and stuff and we they just kept up with us and they were they were just really they're they're really deter determined and patient with us which, which gave us a like let me like made me feel really good about, about the actual label instead of just some label being like oh well, you know like they just lost their basis so we're not gonna we're gonna cut their funding yeah we're like coming that. to see you and then shoving a contract in your face saying sign this sign this sign this and then two years from now you're making records you don't even want to make anymore, and then, you know, you're not making recouping any profits off it or anything, which isn't what it's about, but I mean, you gotta live too, you know? Yeah. 
the EVR has been so good. It's been unbelievable. And I mean, once we, we got a lot of offers and stuff. We played a lot of showcases for a lot of labels, and I mean, they pretty much met every point that we wanted in our contract. They were they met us with you know met halfway with us at least you know or gave us pretty much everything we wanted or needed. And I mean, they're just like awesome, awesome guys, most genuine people I've ever met. I mean, plus ask any anybody that's ever been on EVR, they'll never you never hear a bad complaint about Equal Vision. I mean, as opposed to some other labels that yeah. I'm not gonna talk about, but you know. It's definitely different than the last record because we approached it differently. Um, we made it so that we wrote the the song structures and the basis of the songs first with guitar and drums and such first, and then we put electronica over that, like to put depth of the songs, as opposed to the other way of, of our old CD that we were just kind of playing around in the bedroom with, which. What we pretty much did is just made a bunch of cool electronica stuff and then put guitars and stuff over that. So it's a it's a little bit a little bit different concept to kind of uh, kind of go over an album, but it, it just came a lot better product, a lot more fulfilling, and a lot it, it has a lot more depth to this album that, that we're about to put out. It's uh it's gonna be self it's gonna be self titled. It's gonna be called Sky Eats Airplane, and it's coming out July twenty second.